Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Calgary Confederation. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate you sticking around for this late show here tonight. It's my first late show, and I appreciate uh, the pages and everyone in this room for sticking around when they just want to get home to see uh, the Christmas lights that are being put on outside here. But anyway, the reason of why I'm here, Mr. Speaker, is back on October 18th of, of this year, I, I asked a question in question period uh, regarding the fentanyl crisis, and I just was not happy with the response uh, from the uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of uh, Health, uh, the Minister from Brampton West. Um, she didn't answer my question, basically, Mr. Speaker, and hence this is why we are here today. Now, as you know, Mr. Speaker, uh, the fentanyl crisis is getting worse in this country. It's, a, it's a certainly a, a major national emergency in, in my mind. It, uh, it's an epidemic. Uh, just in B.C. alone, Mr. Speaker, a thousand, almost a thousand people have died this year uh, overdosing on, uh, on fentanyl. And my uh, province of Alberta, uh, the numbers are, are not as bad as that, but certainly it is a crisis all over the country. And uh, we hear about it daily, about the deaths that are occurring because of, uh, of this drug. Now, because of the severity of this emergency crisis, Mr. Speaker, the Standing Committee on, on Health, I, I am a vice chair of that committee, we uh, postponed a study on the National Pharmacare Strategy study that we were we're doing. We uh, postponed it uh, to address this issue, uh, this national opioid uh, crisis. Uh, we brought in many experts. So we brought in many doctors and, and nurses, uh, ER uh, staff. Uh, we brought in first responders, the EMS, uh, the police. Uh, we also brought in officials from the fire departments around the country. We talked to pharmacists. Uh, we talked to social workers and. We even brought in recovering fentanyl and opioid addicts into our, our witness chairs to discuss with us the, uh, the severity of this issue. Uh, two particular presentations we received, Mr. Speaker. One was from the RCMP, the Commissioner of the RCMP, and the Canadian Board of Services representatives as well. And they indicated to us that 98% of illicit fentanyl uh, are, are coming from China to this country here. And so, Mr. Speaker, what I did was I, I had attempted in this meeting to have the Chinese ambassador appear before the committee to explain what his government is doing to help Canada tackle this deadly drug epidemic. And uh, I put the motion down, Mr. Speaker, and the, the Liberal government over here would, would not have it, would not have a representative from the Chinese government to come here to address this issue. Uh, the Liberals, they're ignoring the obvious. China is the primary source of illicit fentanyl here in Canada, and the Liberals would rather deal with the deadly streak drugs, drugs after they're in the hands of Canadians instead of targeting the source, which is China. Uh, so why is, Mr. Speaker, pleasing the Chinese government more important to the Liberals than saving the lives of Canadians? And that was the question I had asked, and I would like to get a response to that. So thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the question from the member from Calgary Confederation on the issue of fentanyl in Canada. Our government is very concerned about the increasing rates of opiate-related overdose deaths occurring across Canada right now and the devastating impact this crisis is having on individuals, families and communities at large. It is clear that the problem that problematic opiate use, including uh, fentanyl, is a complex issue that requires a multifaceted and dynamic approach, an approach that is comprehensive, collaborative, compassionate, and above all, evidence-based. That is why in June our uh, government announced an opiate action plan that focuses on better informing Canadians about the risks of opiates, uh, supporting better prescribing practices, reducing easy access to unnecessary opiates, uh, supporting better treatment uh, uh, options for patients and improving the evidence base upon which our policy decisions will be made. On November 19th uh, at a National Opiate Summit co-hosted by the Minister of Health and the Honourable Dr. Eric Hoskins, Ontario Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, 42 partner organizations committed to concrete actions through the signing of a 
joint statement of action to address the opioid uh, crisis, and indeed, this government is taking action. Following the opioid uh, summit, I engaged with my uh, colleagues at the uh, Public Safety and Foreign Affairs to address the issue of fentanyl from China. The RCMP now have an agreement with China to cut the flow of opioids uh, out of China. Uh, our government will also look at options for expanding the tools available to our border authorities to further address the fentanyl issue. Our government also recognizes that measures must be taken to address the availability and serious harms associated with street drugs. Fentanyl uh, misuse first became prominent with the di diversion of pharmaceutical forms of the drug, usually fentanyl patches. Uh, however, over the past year, the RCMP has reported an increase in domestic production of this illicit uh, fentanyl. This is why our government is moving forward with regulations to control six chemicals that can be used as uh, precursors to end the productions of fentanyl. By scheduling these uh, precursors, any unauthorized importation and exportation of these chemicals will in fact be illegal. Our government has also indicated that it will look at legislative options for regulating pill presses uh, which are being used in ca Canada for illicit drug production. To help uh, address this uh, devastating impacts the opioid crisis is having in our communities, our government has also moved quickly to improve access to uh, nolicoxon, uh, a drug uh, that can save lives by temporarily reversing a potential fatal opioid overdose. Health Canada has made uh, naloxone uh, available without prescription. Further, after an expedited review, the department uh, has approved an easier-to-use nasal spray version of the drug. The interim order signed by the Minister of Health this past summer to allow emergency import of nasal spray from the United States will remain in effect while the manufacturer takes the necessary steps to bring the product to the Canadian markets. This will ensure there is no interruption in supply. In addition, our government is supporting the Good Samaritan Drug Overdose Act private member's bill that would help encourage individuals who witness uh, an overdose to call for emergency help without having to fear that the drug's charges will be laid against them. We have also demonstrated strong support for properly established and managed supervised consumption sites, for example, based on the uh, a thorough and evidence-based review of their applications. Health Canada issued two-year exemption to Dr. Peter uh, Centre in Vancouver and an unprecedented four-year exemption uh, for Insight to continue its important work in downtown east side of Vancouver. In addition, the honourable member for Calgary Confederation. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, your information and what you and your government is doing here in this country. Um, but, uh, Mr. Speaker, again, the, the problem is 98% of illicit fentanyl is coming from China. Why are we not shutting off the tap from China where this drug is coming to this country and killing many Canadians? I, I appreciate the fact that they're, they're working on supervised you know, injection sites and consumption sites, and they've got an antidote now that they're, they're uh, distributing throughout Canada, the, the, the lock zone, in order to uh, help uh, individuals who are uh, overdosing on these particular drugs. But again, why are we not focusing on China? Why is the Liberal government not talking to the Chinese government? I, I feel that our Prime Minister should address this and talk to the Chinese officials. He's over there. He's talking with them. Let's deal with the issue. Thank you. La motion portant que la Chambre s'ajoute. The motion to adjourn the House is deemed ado moved adopted. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Parliamentary Secretary, you have another minute. My apologies. Yes, that's fine. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, if I may just very quickly conclude what I was uh, about to finish off with. We have also demonstrated strong support for properly established and managed supervised consumption sites, for example, based on a thorough and evidence-based review of their applications. Health Canada issued two-year exemption for Dr. Peter Centre in Vancouver and an unprecedented four-year exemption for Insight to continue its important work in the downtown east side of Vancouver. In addition, Health Health Canada will continue to work with new applicants from Montreal and Vancouver to support them through the comp completion of their applications. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I could go on, but to suffice to say directly to the question that the member has put across, uh, I would not make the assumption, because it wouldn't be true, that uh, the government is not taking uh, into 
uh, part of that comprehensive overlook, uh, serious consideration as to how and what role, whether it's our RCMP and China, uh, how can we best deal with this problem? As I say, we need to take all the stakeholders uh, into consideration to try to improve upon the system, which is horrifying many of our communities. Thank you. Now it's time.